Welcome to another episode of The Catholic Novel. Today we're going to talk about Piers Paul Reed's terrific novel, Monk Dawson. Uh, I, I met Piers Paul Reed. Matter of fact, I think I had lunch with him. I, th I said I think it was like 30 years ago when this book was new. Uh, but I'm going to read the first page to you, uh, and then I'm going to comment on it. I had three different experiences of nostalgia reading this first page. So Monk Dawson, the narrator, is a non-believer. I think it's interesting that Piers Paul Reed decided to do that. So here's the first page, chapter one. Acting on mistaken principles of piety and snobbery, my parents sent me to a boarding school in the English countryside, which was run by Benedictine monks. On the first day of the first term, they drove me there themselves, to the country house surrounded by woods which smelt of wild garlic and dead crows. I was then seven years old. We were given tea by the headmaster, Father Francis Ash, in a part of the school that was afterwards out of bounds to the boys. Then they drove away, leaving me alone for the first time in my life, alone with this priest in his black habit and hood. Another car pulls up, and uh, the character who's going to be called uh, Monk Dawson gets out, and his parents are introduced to this Father Ash. The man, that's Dawson's father. The man was tall. The woman seemed like my own mother, and for a moment I wanted to rush into her arms, but did not. I eyed the other boy, and he looked back at me. He was like his father, thin, dark, with brown eyes and black hair. This is Eddie, the mother said to the headmaster. I, I feel sure he should be called Edward now, said the father. Oh, no, said the mother. He's always been Eddie. It doesn't really matter, said Father Fra Francis, in his dry voice. Here, he will be known as Dawson. Now, reading that, uh, that's the first day of uh, high school, okay? I don't remember my first day of high school. Uh, excuse me, the first day of grammar school. I don't remember that either. But I do remember my first day at the major seminary. And this, brought this, this page brought all of this back to me. It was the first day we wore black suits, black ties. We were going to be away from our parents and family for about three months. It's a mix, it was a mixture of sadness and excitement. That's the first trip of nostalgia this caused. The second was this. Back when this novel first came out in 1970, I was te teaching at a college seminary, and a number of the faculty got very interested in this novel, and we read it, and we used to talk about it. It was very exciting. And somehow, and I cannot remember how, I got in touch with Piers Paul Reed. And on uh, one of my one or two trips to London, I had lunch with him in his office. A really nice person. Uh, I'm sure we talked about Monk Dawson, and he gave me some of his views on the Catholic novel. He gave me a couple of good anecdotes about Graham Greene. That's the third nostalgic trip. Uh, I reread the book for the show. And if this show turns out all right, somehow I'm going to get it to Piers Paul Reed. Because I want to thank him uh, for the writing that he's done that has had made a big impression on me. And also for the, just this wonderful career he has had as a novelist. Now, what's the story about? He, he starts with uh, Edward Dawson in grammar school, and he goes all the way through his priesthood. Uh, early on, he talks about religious instruction at the school he is at. Okay, so remember now, the narrator is not a believer. He's the other boy on the first page. And he's a friend of Dawson in grammar school, and they link up later in the novel. Religion was never forced on us at Kirkham. Religious instruction was the least important subject on the curriculum, and we all left the school particularly ignorant at the substance of our supposed beliefs. But this was not the product of negligence. The monks of this order, of St. Benedict, were only following the tactics of another order, the Society of Jesus. Now, I studied religion in the first two years of college uh, at the seminary, and the priest teaching it didn't think you could teach religion, so he taught it as a kind of a memory course. Uh, and I think religion teachers have to make a decision. Are they going to emphasize doctrine, or are they going to somehow, through their personality, their dedication, their zeal, somehow communicate something to the students? And it's not, it's not an easy decision to make, and it's not easy to accomplish. Um, but anyway, it, the, the religious instruction takes very strongly with Edward Dawson, and he eventually becomes a priest. Uh, I marvel that laymen, 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 and laywomen can write really good novels about priests. I was thinking of The Edge of Sadness, uh, by Edwin O'Connor. I was thinking, of course, Die of a Country Priest by George Bananos. And I would say uh, Piers Paul Reed either knew a large number of priests, or maybe he thought about being a priest himself for a while. But his, his insights into the priesthood are really good. There's a page here when he begins to have doubts. 
uh, he's been a priest a couple of years, and uh, he begins to think, maybe I haven't been doing any good at all. Maybe in confession all I'm doing is laying unnecessary burdens on people. Uh, maybe my preaching isn't really deeply touching anyone. Now that can be a really serious temptation. Uh, not only for priests, for anybody who is a religious believer. You know, we all want to think we're making a difference. We're somehow communicating, we're somehow touching people. Um, if you or, you or someone you know is really enthusiastic and really energetic about something, and that person tries to communicate it to someone else, and it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't work, okay? That is extremely discouraging. Now, if you, if you, if you single out a priest, the priest has de dedicated his life to this. You know, not just a weekend, not just a couple of weeks, not just a couple of months. This preaching Jesus Christ is the most important thing in his life. And when he does it and nothing seems to happen, that can be a terrific temptation. It, ter it can cause all kinds of doubts and questions, okay? So as the novel develops, Dawson eventually leaves the priesthood. Uh, you may, if you watched the show we did on Mr. Blue, you may remember I said everybody remembers one scene from Mr. Blue. It's the screenplay when, when the world is coming to an end and mass is, the last mass is being said. Well, the one scene I remember from Monk Dawson when I read it, when I read it, my gosh, I can't believe it, when I read it almost 50 years ago, was a black mass. Uh, uh, Dawson has left the priesthood, apparently has no faith at all, and is living with a woman. They're at a big dinner party, and everybody has too much to drink. And somebody comes up with the idea, let's have a black mass. Uh, and they start talking over, and they say, well, look, we've got the priest. But how, uh, however, black mass can't be said without a naked woman. So we, someone's got, some woman's got to get naked. So the woman with whom Dawson is living, she, does, she does it. So she gets undressed, and she lays on this table. That's going to be the altar. And Dawson is not, you know, hey, isn't this going to be great? We're going to have a black mass. But he's not fighting it either. He's going to do it. So, so he starts it out. He gets out a couple of lines, and then he becomes nauseous, okay? Now, does he become nauseous just because he's had too much to drink? Or does he become nauseous because this whole thing is so revolting to him? I mean, it's, it's about as blasphemous an act as you can perform. Uh, Reed doesn't, doesn't tip his hand on this, okay? Um, so eventually, Dawson starts writing some columns. Uh, he's basic, basically critical of the church. Uh, now, I, I, in, in any one of these discussions, I want to avoid telling you how the, how the uh, novel ends, all right? But I do want to read a quote from Graham Greene, whom uh, Pierce Ball Reed knew, and as I said, it, it talked to him, and actually, uh, he asked Gra Graham, Graham Greene late in his life, where are you in relation to the church? And Greene said to him, read my short story, A Visit to Morin, M-O-R-I-N. That's, that's where I am. That, that, Morin, I am Morin. And uh, Morin is a character who writes Catholic novels, but says he, he no longer believes. But that doesn't mean he, he has lost his faith. Okay, unfortunately, Green never really explained the distinction between belief and faith. Uh, my guess is he, uh, he had rejected a number of theological views, but he still believes somehow that he was in touch with God. Um, so he, he, he says that the books he writes uh, as a Catholic novelist, affect all sorts of people. But he feels like a member of the Foreign Legion who is no longer a part of the country. He, somebody who is battling for a country of which he is no longer a full citizen. Uh, I, think that's, that's re really, I think that's really fascinating, okay? Anyway, here's what Green says about Monk Dawson. A remarkable novel, witty, even cynical, observation leads to a conclusion profoundly moving. And I would go along with that completely. I'm not going to tell you what the conclusion is. But I, I will tell you this. Uh, Reed does give some terrific insights into priesthood. Um, eventually, it seems as though um, uh, Dawson's lack of faith is weakening. In other words, let me put it this way. He seems to be having doubts about the fact that he is a non-believer, OK? Uh, so, I, uh, so I, I strongly recommend this novel. My favorite novel about a priest, as I've already announced, is uh, Power and the Glory. Uh, and of course, Diary of a Country Priest is, is a classic. But this one is awfully good, and I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that you don't hear people talking about it. Uh, so what I've done in a uh, college seminary house of formation, I've started a book discussion group, a Catholic book discussion group. 
And one of the novels is Monk Dawson and Others, Power and the Glory, Deep River, and The Devil's Advocate by Morris West. I will be very interested how the seminarians react to this novel because what he captures is um, a kind of naivete. So let me, let me just tell you what the first, the first day at the seminary was when we all put on our black suits for the first time. In the photographs that were taken by, by parents, by friends, you can almost see the idealism. Uh, you might also be able to you catch something of the nervousness. We're going to be away from home for the first time for many of us. But we had the feeling that we were em embarking on something absolutely tremendous. Uh, it was just awe-inspiring. Uh, looking back, probably we, we understood what it meant to be a priest very superficially. Uh, I confess, when, I, when people ask me, why did I become a priest, I can tell them what I was thinking of, and it's very simple. I thought this was a tremendous way to do good. And, and, and Dawson says something very much like it. He says, I want to help everybody. I want to make a real difference in the world. Uh, and yet, three months after I was ordained a priest, I could not remember my motive. I just knew the experience of being a priest was about a hundred times better than anything I, I had ever thought of. Now, why can't I really say, you know, this is the reason I became a priest? Because any vocation, and it's, it's very dramatic with a priest, involves three mysteries. The mystery of the person, the mystery of God, and the mystery of the vocation. For me to know why I became a priest, I'd have to understand Robert Lauder completely, and I don't even come close to that. Uh, I'd have to understand God completely, and I never will, will, will be able to do that. And I would have to understand how that call, if, I, if I'm called by God, how that came about, and that's terribly mysterious. So, but I can say what I was thinking of, and what I was thinking of is not very different from what Edward Dawson was thinking of. This somewhat, general, vague uh, idea that you're entering something really important and you want to help as many people as possible. And that's exactly, uh, uh, though Reed doesn't mention Satan, that's exactly where Dawson is attacked. You're, you're not helping anybody. You're actually putting uh, meaningless burdens on people. Uh, well, what really are you doing with your life? And as I say, that can be a very strong temptation. So at one point in the novel, Dawson has a breakdown. And when he comes through the breakdown, then he, he eventually leaves the priesthood, and he makes, he makes some statement like this. Uh, I finally reached my maturity. And so he looks back about the, the whole experience he had of becoming a priest as something childish. A friend of mine who left the priesthood said something almost exactly the same thing to me. Uh, your whole perspective changes when you apparently lose faith, okay? What used to be important no longer looks important. So I, I hope, I, don't, I, I didn't tell you the end of the novel, but I strongly encourage, if you're interested in these novels we're doing, this one is special, okay? Uh, uh, it came out first in 1970, and uh, I'm sure I, 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 bought a new, a recent I bought a copy recently, so I'm sure you can get a hold of it. I don't think you will be disappointed with it. Monk Dawson by Piers Paul Reed. Mm -hmm.